everyone, welcome to the program. This is Sunday Politics, live on Channel's television. I'm Sean Wakimale in Abuja. Tonight, there are a few business that we need to deal with based on the state of the nation. Now, the National Assembly is considering the request of President Bola Tinobu informing the National Assembly about ECOWAS stands or against the coup in Nigeria Republic. Don't forget, Nigeria Republic is just a few kilometers away from the borders of Nigeria. We are neighbors. Whatever happened to them affects us in some way. So there were a lot of, there's been debate as to the stance and the reaction of the national, uh, of the ECOWAS and the federal government to what is happening in Nigeria Republic. What is Nigeria's business? Why do we need to care? These are some of the issues. Don't forget also, in the past few days, we've seen a lot of activities in the Senate uh, where we've been seeing screening of the pre nominees of President uh, Bola Tinobu. How do you assess these personalities that the president have put forward? Are they the kind of persons that you envisage that uh, Bola Tinobu will put forward in his cabinet? We'll be analyzing the, some of these issues for you, but there's something that is very important. You remember that the Nigerian Labour Congress, the Trade Union Congress, and uh, every uh, of the organized labor are threatened that they will begin nationwide strike and protest. And that the federal government intervened. The president met with the TUC and the NLC trying to ensure that there is no shutdown of economy and uh, the running of government or the, the nation moving forward. But what is the labor stand? on that one. Just about the time when we are trying to wrap our heads around what is going on, the resident doctors uh, are now angry. They said they, the federal government must meet their demands. Don't forget, if you're asking the question, who are these resident doctors? How many are they? What is their population? What is their percentage in the whole scheme of things? In about less than 30,000 of the medical doctors that we have in Nigeria, the resident doctors are over 10,000. That you know what it means that the senior doctors that bridge the gap between the consultants and the other um, other doctors in nigeria they hold a very significant value in the medical chain in nigeria they said on wednesday they will go out to protest and they will down too this means a very dire situation in the nation's uh, medical and health system and that's the first business that we need to quickly deal with. And we get to other business. I have some very, very knowledgeable experts and uh, personalities that will deal with the ministerial nominees and the Niger coup situation uh, that is happening and how Nigeria is handling that. Let's quickly speak with the president of the uh, Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors. Dr. Emeka Oji joins us virtually. Uh, Dr. Oji, thanks so much for joining us. We thought that uh, things have been settled because the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Tajuddin Abbas, had intervened. He met with the President. We thought that uh, the, the federal government is listening to you, but now from the communicate that was shown on the screen right now, it showed that uh, things are not resolved. And uh, you and your colleagues have made up your mind that you will not work and you'll be on the street. What exactly have gone wrong? Thank you, Shell, for having me. Well, we want to thank the Speaker of the House of Representatives for his efforts. We also thank the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. And indeed, we thank uh, every other government official who has, in one way or the other, tried to intervene in this matter. But uh, certainly, we are still aware of the demands that we've made, which everybody there is no government official that has tried to intervene in this matter that has ever told us that, uh, that those demands are not germane and that, that they shouldn't be met. But the question is, up to now, how come none of those issues have been addressed? No single one of them. Take, for instance, the, the very important issue of a one-for-one -one replacement. You see, we keep hammering on these things, and the Nigerians will agree with us that our hospitals are massively depleted. We do not have the numbers anymore. We do not have the doctors and nurses to take care of Nigerians. And that secular we were promised as at February this year that it will be released. And up to now, it's not, it has not because it is that secular that we give the chief medical directors across the country the 
the opportunity to quickly replace doctors and nurses that have left the the system in such of greener pastures. And as long as you don't do that, our members will continue to be overworked. They will continue to die. They will continue to break down. And we, we don't think that uh, should continue to happen. And part of the problems we have is that when you see uh, some uh, interested government officials trying to intervene, then you now see what looks as if there are some other people who are trying to aggravate the matter. And unfortunately, that is what has led to this uh, escalation that will, will likely happen by this week if um, the government agencies involved do not take appropriate steps to address these uh, issues that we've been raising for a long time now. Okay, so this, uh, and I asked you this question the other time uh, that we got to speak with you, that this is not begin, this, this particular matter, your grievances did not begin against government, rather, it did not begin with the Balatunubu government. It began way back into the old government, but where government is a continuum and your demands are still subsistent. So the question is, is it possible that you give this government some breathing space, you know, uh, just to play the devil's advocate in this matter? Because this government had come into office and they have enormous challenges on their plate already. Uh, on one hand, your colleagues within the organized labor uh, which you are also part of, are also threatening based on the, the subsidy matter. Now, the government is dealing with that. The economy situation is there. Security situation is there. Is it possible that you give this government maybe some time to put their house in order? They're still trying to settle cabinet issues. Well, uh, we are doing that already. What is the... Unfortunate thing is that as we keep waiting, things are deteriorating. Do we rather wait until... Every doctor leaves the the hospital and you don't have anybody there again. Look, what happens when an association um, issues notice, you know, issues a notice of uh, the ceremony and makes demand is for government to identify the very urgent demands and address them. And then the other one that will take a little more ne negotiation to happen, you sit down with them and start, kick start the processes. Unless, of course, we are saying that amongst all the things you listed, labor, you know, economy and all that, unless, of course, all of us have agreed that health sector is not important to be addressed. I did tell you that the hospitals are deserted. It's, it's an emergency. Patients are dying already. When you bring patients to emergency uh, department of, of the hospitals, you don't have do enough doctors there to take care, care of them, and they are dying. You know, patients come to the hospital to see their doctors in the clinic. They spend the whole day there. They end up not seeing them. And then even this uh, issue of 2023 medical residency training fund, it was captured in the budget for, for the year. And this should have been paid earlier on in, in the year. We are already in August, and it has not been paid. Okay, so we believe, our members believe that this, these uh, issues are very urgent. And incidentally, the government side, they have not said they cannot address them. But the question now is, how come it, these things have not been addressed? And if you recall sometime in May, when we went on a warning strike, the government side called us and signed an agreement with us. The second one for one, one replacement is clearly written in that agreement that it will be released on or before 5th of June. Everything about that thing has been done. It's just for the circular to be issued. And we are saying, okay, even if you don't want to issue this circular, then you must have another way of recruiting clinical staff to replace those who have left the system. Because that is essentially what we are asking for. And as we are talking, people are still living. But Dr. Oji, can you give us an understanding? Just for a moment, Dr. Oji. Uh, let me ask you straight off. Uh, we know that the population of medical doctors in practice registered uh, with the NMA is about 30,000. Am I correct? Well, that may be the record you have, but you record that even last year, the Nigerian Medical Association, it was, you know, was quoted to have said that we have just about 24,000 doctors in Nigeria. Okay. So and is it, let's, is, let's is, assume, is, just for a moment, I'm going somewhere with my question. Let's assume that, okay, 30,000 might be uh, a flamboyant uh, figure to call. Uh, it means that we do not have more than 30,000 medical doctors. Uh, and the, the, um, the, the United Nations... Um, ratio of the medical doctor to citizen ratio, how, how many is it now? 
It's supposed to be one doctor to six hundred for play, you know. But what do we have presently with the numbers? We are doing that we have. more than we are doing more than one doctor to, to ten thousand, as at the last time we, we checked, and it is getting worse. Okay, now so we, we do know that the membership of the resident doctors in Nigeria are about ten thousand. But you are saying that more of those numbers have left the country. Is that right? You know, the numbers fluctuate. We used to be about 16,000, but because of the fact that people live every day, it's only an estimate that we can give you between 12,000 to 15,000. People live every day, people join and people live. So it's, it's difficult to be effective with the number. That is right. a study we are doing now to, to, to update ourselves on the numbers as at today. All right. you know, so and that will be released very soon. So the question I'm asking is that, at what, what is the rate? Because one of your major demand is that the federal government to attend to the doctors who are leaving the country, brain drain. And you are asking that there is a pressure on those of you who are left behind. Is that right? That is correct. Now, so can you give us how many doctors in the last one year, how many resident doctors, that is, have left the country? The figure we have is that close to 100 to 200 leave every month. And so if you do the math in a space of one year, we would have, left, we, we would have lost uh, between 1,000 to 2,000 resident doctors. And you, you need to realize that we are talking about resident doctors. There are other kind of doctors that are leaving. Okay. So consultants, which countries? I know that a lot of them left to the UK. Uh, Saudi Arabia is also there. Canada is there. Uh, which other countries are they live, are these doctors living the most? Because it's not only in your own practice that you find a lot of Nigerians living. It's the Jackpa syndrome, it, it cuts across. But you are saying as an organization or um, as a union that is impacting on your practice. Is that right? That is correct. And some of them are even going to African countries. That will tell you how bad the Nigerian health sector has become, that doctors will leave this country and go to African countries because they have better working conditions there. They have better infrastructure. And we are supposed to be giants of Africa. Now, so what we're saying now, uh, what you and your colleagues have agreed, is that from Wednesday morning by 10 a.m., you are going to be storming the Federal Ministry of Health the Office of the Head of Service of the Federation and all the federal and state health institutions nationwide, and you will picket them. For those who may not really have been on the street, uh, may not understand what um, it means to picket. It means that you probably will be putting chains and locks on some, and you'll not allow some of these gates to be open. Am I right? That is correct. So it means that in some health institution in Nigeria, not only that your, your members are not going to work, we're talking about almost 15,000 doctors in Nigeria, but also you will not allow operations to go on. Is that the right thing? That is the mandate of our National Executive Council. So do you think that this will impact negatively on the already bad situation in this country? So that is the reason why we are appealing to government to intervene at this point. We believe that this can be resolved. We have done everything we, we can to resolve this. But uh, the, our members just feel that the government has not done enough and they believe that they have capacity to do more. So, and that is why, you see, during the meeting yesterday, we had options, you know, of starting this protest by Monday. But again, in our usual manner, we still shifted it to still give enough time for government to intervene before Wednesday next week. Because we simply cannot just be on this total and indefinite strike action. And uh, it looks as if we have been ignored. And patients are just, uh, Nigerians are, are suffering, our members are suffering too. And so we believe that the government should do more to address these challenges. They can resolve these things. I have been saying it in a matter of a day or two. You know, so let them identify the very urgent demands we've made, try to solve them by tomorrow or next, then sit down with us. Let us put timelines to other demands we've made. We are patriots. We are reasonable people. We are willing to work. But what our members are saying is that they cannot continue to work in this condition when every week we report deaths of doctors. Every week. You know, and that is deaths. We are not talking about those who are breaking down. For, for God's sake, the fact that we our doctor-to-patient ratio is 1 to 10,000. 
practically speaking, what do you think is, is, is happening? People have left. Everybody has left. And people who are left behind, they are, they are, they are breaking down on, under the weight of enormous work. And then we still have some doctors outside the system who could have been quickly recruited. The fact that they are not being re recruited, many of them are living too. Okay, so this is an emergency, and we believe that government should see it as such. Uh, Dr. Oji, uh, I'd like us to wrap up now. I, I would like to plead with you and your colleagues. I've done that once uh, in the past and say, uh, because I know uh, family members, my, my immediate younger brother is a medical doctor, and I know just how difficult it is to get uh, to being a medical doctor. I mean, aside that, uh, any other profession is also very tedious to get by, but uh, I know just how important your practice is, so I mean, essential service to this nation, but then we are all in 18, isn't it? And we're hoping that government will take action and do the right thing. And I hope that uh, it's going to be well for you and your colleagues. Thanks so much, Dr. Emeka Oji, President, Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors. Thank you for having me, Shell. Thank you. Well, uh, let's deal with another issue right now. That's a problem and a challenge, which I think that tonight, um, one thing that cheers me over the weekend is our girls who are doing us proud, who did us proud. They took the cup, they become a basketball champion in Africa. And our ladies also, in the Australia, in the World Cup, in the Women's World Cup, they're also into the quarterfinals of the Women's World Cup. World Cup. We're cheering you on, and we are hoping that this other side that gives us joy will be able to rub off on the other side that doesn't give us as much joy. So let's focus on some other things. Congratulations to all of them, and uh, congratulations to Nigeria, too. Um, let, let's get into uh, one matter that is of importance. Uh, two of them, actually, are the ministerial nominees and their screening. Are you satisfied, as a Nigerian, watching them, and how the Senate did carry on with the activities are they scrutinizing them? These are the people that are supposed to take charge of every sector of our lives. Are they really grilling them and getting the right information and getting them prepped up for the task ahead? And also, the, 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 the cool situation in Niger Republic. Niger is our neighbor, next door neighbor. Whatever affects them, in fact, the lang language like Kanuri, Fufude, Hausa languages have been spoken. Some Nigerians are even married to Nigerians. They are seen as our brothers and sisters. And so it bothers a lot of Nigerians what happened to them. Let's get talking about this. I'm being joined tonight by Senator Oyekachi Oyeboyi, who is a senator from Eboyi State. Thank you so much, Senator, for joining us tonight. Thank you, Shu. Yeah. And I have an academic, a scholar of international relations, uh, the, um, the Dean of Bruno Elders Forum, Professor. Khalifa Dikwa, he joins us live from our news uh, Medjugorje studio. Thank you so much, Prof, and it's good to see you tonight. Thank you very much, Shao. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good, good evening, uh, Nigerians. Yeah. All of us. Great, 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 great. Prof, uh, let me begin with you, Prof, tonight. Um, what is happening in the National Assembly? I'll, I'll begin with the issue of the screening. Uh, what's your view on the... The screening process. Are you are you satisfied with the crop of people, the personalities, the choices frankly, that the um, president Tunubu has it made? Is, it is a bit funny. It is a bit funny because actually it didn't start from the National Assembly. Uh, some of them with hard baggage from uh, erratic uh, certificates to what they did in the past, either uh, not having attended NYC or inconsistency in their ages and so on. That, that aspect ought to have been discovered from the, from the Secret Service. I'm amazed that uh, the Secret Service that we knew very well, meticulous in its work, it, it is uh, allowing a few of them to drag its image uh, into the mud because uh, some, even some questions that they at the Senate, ought to have been beyond, beyond even the certificate, be it a school living certificate, which is the minimum, or you have up to master's or PhDs and so on, because you ought to know some aspects of what 
you are likely to work as a minister. When you are a minister, you are literally representing Mr. President, and you should feel <coughs> challenged like Mr. President in your areas. Again, the Nigeria is a big country desires to have uh, ministers who know something outside their own area of um, specialization or ministry. Uh, people who are intellectually sound, at least in terms of international relations, how international politics is played, how in certain quarters of the world uh, blatant lies are made to look uh, finer and more beautiful than the basic truth. And they sometimes call it uh, diplomacy. And therefore, I, I, I was a bit amazed because even if you are a senator, for instance, having been a part of the National Assembly, the solidarity or esprit de corps that we call in French, at least there are questions that you ought to answer. Uh, why? Uh, perhaps at least you will say it depends on the portfolio I'm going to be given. Why is it that Mr. President did not give them the portfolio to give them the the entire people of Nigeria, the impression against uh, who the state minister is going to do in case he was in the wrong place, suggestions may come. But unfortunately, we still do not have ministers. And again, with the certain things that I say with the, with the uh, military coup in Niger, uh, Mr. President had advisors, advisors who knew had some history and who knew some how international politics is, uh, is played, the situation would, would have been different because whether uh, you, you go to school to read history, so the basic thing is that you should know more than your own state. And uh, I dare say that sometimes I, I used to mock my, my friends from Lagos. I always tell them that you, you come, you don't know anything outside Lagos, Lagos State, and that you always, you only face the, the sea, and that you, your brain is not properly utilized to memorize so many things, you, and you are, you are likely to be comfortable with the f uh, fish brain. I, I always <laughs> disturb them that way. I said, you don't even know where uh, Sokoto is, Borno is, Yola, you know, not the borders like Ilela, you don't have the borders of Berniwa in Jigawa, Ilela in Sokoto, uh, about seven states, and you have Yobe, you know them part of Yobe, you have Gaidam Unisari, the same thing with northern, northern Borno, where the same people of, uh, were split into two uh, in 1887 at the Berlin Conference, where uh, colonial uh, administration sat down to to split brothers, blood brothers. Uh, just uh, they sat down to divide the, uh, the continent like a cake. Yeah, so, so Prof, if, it, if you look at it uh, carefully, yeah, yeah. 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 So the yes. choices of president. Oh, I mean, you've you've touched on uh, how you think that the senators should have gone about uh, what. Uh, uh, the grilling. I mean, uh, I, th I think maybe I'm not sure we can At use the word grilling do, if they that. To if do they the did basic that. things, yes. Yeah. Particularly on foreign affairs. If you were minister of foreign affairs, we internal affairs. If you were the minister of defense. At this crucial time, how to approach a crisis? How, how to do? How not to do in terms of the language that will annoy? the neighboring countries with whom we've been fighting insurgency for 14 years. And this is the kind of thing. And again, uh, advisors, if there were advisors or minister, relevant minister at that time, who will have told our president uh, that uh, having been appointed the chairman of ECOWAS, ECOWAS is basically for economic, not politics, even though in economics too, poly, there are uh, uh, games of politics, and that uh, uh, you could have allowed another member of the, the deputy from the from the ECOWAS to say it, because the interpretation now being given is that uh, it is uh, President Tinubu who declared this thing as as if he he put 
military intervention as first. It was actually it was the last, and on behalf of the uh, uh, on behalf of uh, the ECOWAS Air, Air itself, on behalf of it, not because of Nigeria. If it were on behalf of Nigeria, that Mr. President wouldn't have that done that uh, mistake of. Uh, committing an impeachable uh, offense because the National Assembly ought to have had the consent. And the story will have been different with somebody who believed in staying there longer than necessary. For instance, during the, the reign, the, the uh, 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 leadership or tenure of uh, President Obasanjo Njo as a, as a civilian uh, uh, president for eight years, you, you remember the document they signed um, in Paris over whatever that could come out of the ICJ verdict about Bakasi or any other neighborhoods, is including the Lake Chat region, which was uh, later discovered by the colonial powers to have uh, been too rich to be left in the hands of anybody. And, and thirdly, Nigeria is the only country in the region, in, in fact, in the sub-region, whatever it is, that has no uh, military from outside, from outside the continent. So that is also disturbing them because we have shown our ability to, to stand for all these things, despite the overwhelming situation that uh, we are going through in terms of insurgency, banditry, and so on, Sheung. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, Prof, let me come uh, to the story here with uh, Senator Wabonyi. Um, do you have a feeling that m m maybe some Nigerians are not quite satisfied with the manner in which you and your colleagues had gone about the process of screening these ministerial nominees? Well, thank you, Shiro. First and foremost, I want to congratulate those that made the list um, out of... Uh, over 200 million of uh, Nigerians, 48 were nominated to serve in the Federal Executive Council. And um, on the other hand, I want to appreciate Mr. President for painstakingly, you know, making this nomination. I believe that uh, he actually looked down well, and that is why he was able to see the news, because it is the eye that looked down well that can see the news. Uh, when you look at the, at the pedigree of the people nominated, you go through their CV. Uh, these are people that have actually distinguished themselves uh, in the previous position they have held, either at the federal level, uh, state level, and uh, what have you. And um, of course, it is our duty, you know, as a parliament, or precisely the Senate, you know, uh, to look at them and uh, for possible confirmation in line with the provisions of the relevant sections of the Constitution of Nigeria. Mm. And um, I must tell you, uh, if you really observe the process, uh, you can see that uh, we are not joking about it. You, you, uh, are you? Yes. Uh, the, the, because there are, there are those who believe that the, the bow and go syndrome just took over. No. And that you, you just did not do what was right by Nigerians, hoping that you were going to take some of these people to task. Nigerians are facing a lot of problems, and if these guys are supposed, if these nominees are supposed to be the ones to handle and bring solutions, have you been able to extract capacity, extract knowledge, extract intellect, extract wisdom that they could use in tackling this problem from them? Have you done a satisfactory job, Senator? I must tell you, I've done so well in that regard. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, if you observe the proceedings from the beginning, you actually know that uh, 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 we didn't ask Eddie to bow and go. You we did, asked, actually. Uh, well, I don't, I don't a, know. You did a lot. A lot, lot of your well, colleagues well, there. Well, there are, there are some colleagues. Uh, by After they, they explained their profile, by virtue, it was just a matter of yes, bow and go. By virtue of the rules you know, of the Senate, there are some privileges that lawmakers enjoy. In the face yes. of, of this kind of situation. Yeah, because a lot of people believe that Nigeria is going through a lot. And uh, you cannot say bow and go when people need to answer questions that need to test their capacity of how they can handle office. Well, thank you so much. Uh, in as much as uh, I don't admit that uh, we actually ask some to bow and go, uh, it, it takes us to what is the essence you know, of the screening. The essence of the screening is to understand the capacity of a nominee. 
towards a particular office, mm -hmm. in this case, to be appointed as a minister. To test? Yes. And well, if the person fails the test, yes. you screen the person yes. out? Yes. But if the person before now has shown capacity, somebody has been a senator, somebody has been a member of the House of Representatives, and what did the Constitution say? For you to be qualified to be a minister in the Free Executive Council, you must be qualified to be a member of at least House of Reps. Of, as of reps. So That's when the minimum look, standard. Yes, a minimum standard. So when you see that this person, and of course the CVs were submitted, so, 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 uh, and who peruse through their Senator, CVs. The yes. question is that what is the standard of being a member of the House of Reps? You have a basic school certificate. Yes. And you are 30 years of age. Of course. That is the minimum standard. Of course. Do you think that the Nigeria of today deserves someone who is just 30 years and has a school set, and that is all it is for you, then you come and bow and go? Well, are you saying that everyone that has been to the National Assembly is fit to become a minister of the Federal Republic based on the Nigeria of today? That is a fundamental question. Well, uh, it, does, it doesn't suffice, you know, for you to just qualify to be a member of the House of Ref. For us, for, for us to ask you to bow and go. We look at your CVs. Remember, they submitted their curriculum for a day ahead, and have gone through it, gone through the achievement in the private sector, the achievement in the public sector. So in such case, when you see that somebody has the capacity, for example, if you allow me, I, I can pick some of the individuals. For example, we look at somebody like uh, 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 Dr. Lausa from Lagos. This is somebody that I've actually, though not a member of the, uh, the parliament before, but in the field of medicine, he has distinguished himself, not just in Nigeria, but in the international community. So when you see such a personality, even though we subjected him to further scrutiny, you don't need further, you don't need a suicide to tell you that if you give this man Minister of Health, he's going to do wonders. And that takes us to a person like uh, Senator David Nguyenzo Omahe. He's a member of the Senate. Your man. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course, my former governor. Yeah. He's, not my, he's my former governor. Yeah, but he's from your state. Yeah, he's from my state. Yeah. When you look at that man, that man is a guru in the area of infrastructure development. You can see what he did in Ebony State within the past eight years. Ebony State is one of the states that received the least allocation. But look at what the young man did. He, first of all, you know, started with the uh, uh, road infrastructure. Before now in Ebony State, when you construct road with asphalt, in two to three years, the road will fail completely. This man brought another innovation of doing road with concrete pavement. How many Nigerians know that uh, Dave Omai is an engineer? How many Nigerians know his capacity? He just governed only one state. Thank you. Just probably one of the one of the smallest states in Nigeria. Thank you. Now you are coming to become a minister of the Federal Republic. That the, that requires another level of knowledge and capacity and expertise. Don't you think that you need to bring that person in under a, 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 a scrutiny that will show whether he has capacity? Let me tell you something. You you, you can always assess somebody based on his precedence. Presidents, guys, in this case, if somebody have done well as a governor, remember, Ebony, I take exception to the fact that Ebony is one of the smallest states. It's not true. In, in terms of landmass, land mass, he's one of the smallest states in Nigeria. Well, it may be, but not the smallest. You, in fact, you get one of the smallest uh, only, I agree allocation, with you, federal allocation. We'll get the I can analyze yeah. how, why you fall within the five smallest states in Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, now, like I said earlier, you go by presidents. For example, now you're going for an interview in another uh, media house. People will look at this show, ah, the show of Channel Television, oh, the guy is eloquent, oh, the guy can do well. The, the, the assessment starts from there. And somebody who have done marvelously well as a governor of a state and came up with an innovation that no other governor in the history of Nigeria, even not the entire West Africa, have come up with. Concrete road pavement. Go to your state today and see what he did. Within eight years, all the roads he did are still standing. And we'll stand for the next 50 years. Senator. These are the type of leaders we want. Have you, have you ever watched how the American Congress scrutinize those who are going to be in the, in the, uh, in the cabinets of the American president? Yes, I've, I've, of course, I've seen so many. And Com that is what we're Com doing. Compared to this, do you think that uh, you have done a good job, you and your colleagues? Of a truth, show, we have done a good job. We have done a good By job. your own assessment. You can tune in tomorrow. We still have two ministers to screen. We cover this live every day. Let me tell I you. monitor this. this Let is, me tell you. This is my food. It, this is my drink. I watch it, it every day, up to one every hour. bit of it. It takes us up to one hour to finish with one ministerial nominee. So we're not talking about it. Go through it. Go, go, through, the, go, go, go through the process. 
You will see it. Sorry. In fact, you can see one young man that uh, came yesterday that we have to call his attention to what he tweeted against Nigeria. In fact, it took him over an hour. Senator, I mean, to that, satisfy Nigeria. So the question well is that you took attention in the, the first, uh, the, those who described the early screening as a sham, as something that is less than a standard that is supposed to be for the Nigerian Senate. And for the caliber of the people that we know are in the, in the red chambers, uh, there are a lot of Nigerians who are this, unhappy with the manner in which you have gone about it. But in the last few days, it, it showed that maybe you are listening, uh, the Yacht Chamber is listening to Nigerians. Of course, we are, are listening to it. But the question is that you are cherry picking. Mm. You pick the persons that you want to scrutinize. You pick the ones that you want to cover up, your members of your party. No, we, and you we, just we allow them that. to buy and take go. Take Senator, that. Senator, but, but that's what is obvious. No, that's what is going that. on. We subjected all of them to equal treatment. I will be asking you when we come back from the break, and yes. Professor Dikwa is, uh, is also here. Your region has only five nominees compared to Southwest, Northwest, yeah. and I'd like to get your view as a member of cabinet, I mean, a member of the Senate on this matter. What the president has done to the Southeast, which I'm also hearing, that APC members in the Southeast are already talking. Northwest, Northeast, they have about nine, 10 uh, 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 ministerial nominees. What has happened to their region? We'll be discussing that, and also the coup in Niger and the intervention of President Tunubu and ECOWAS. We'll be right back, everyone. Turn us in here. My name is David Oladiji Bolare. I'm the CEO, founder of Synergy Guards Nigeria and Synergy Guards UK. I'm also the CEO of David's court, I got to know about Arjun Holmes through a neighbor of mine. This is David Court, located in one of Arjun Holmes' estates, Ocean View Estate, Ibejuneki. This area is called the Neo Lagos. This is a dream come true. My advice to individuals is to have a plan and follow those plans to the latter. The Adrian Home Template is a great one. You can have your bits of the great concept like I'm doing right now. Tap into their dreams to achieve and execute your future. Adrian Homes. Building cities, communities, and homes. Hi. Now, let me tell you about Safari Valley Eco Resort, the first of its kind in West Africa. Upon your arrival, you are introduced to your butler, who plans your itinerary. We were surrounded by wildlife from the moment we entered the eco park. So many activities, all in the same purpose. You will sit at the gym or the stable. They have it all. At my break, I'm able to practice my putting. We also went fishing on a man-made canal. Our tour guides taught us so much about the wildlife and how to interact with them. They used only electric vehicles here. This creates a serene environment. I'm told it's over a thousand acres. My cabin here sits on two acres with a large terrace space overlooking my private swimming pool. Now this is royalty. They have their own farms, thousands of fruit trees. I can also have my lunch here yeah, at the waterfall. Quite a beautiful place you have here. Visit Safari Valley Eco Resort in Ghana, bringing you closer to nature. In today's world, our lifestyle, both at work and at play, depends on connectivity. Our connectivity depends on the devices that make it possible, and these devices depend on electric power. When power fails, our life shrinks, our work drops, and our joy dips. JRB Solar Energy Systems are here to ensure that we enjoy uninterruptible power, uninterruptible joy. Whether you're running a business, an institution, or just a home, you return daily to rest. JRB has got you covered. No project is too big for our super digital inverters, long-lasting batteries, and efficient solar panels. Go. Dream on. Change your world. JRB Solar Inverters, Batteries, Solar Panels, Solar Street lights and more. Telephone 0906 752 Email sales at jrbsolar.com. With JRB, the sun's gonna shine on everything you do. Thank you so much everyone for staying with us. Professor 
Khalifa Dukwa is the Dean of Bronu Elders Forum. He's been speaking with us from our Meduguri studio. And here with me in our Abuja studio is Senator Onye Kachi Onweboi, who is a member of the National Assembly in the Senate and uh, from AP, APC and uh, in, uh, from uh, uh, Ebony State. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Before I go to Prof, uh, just quick questions uh, that I need to ask you. So you have two more to go in the ministerial um, uh, screening no that you have. Um, so you have uh, Dr. Mahmoud and you have uh, Fessor Kayamo. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> and then, of course, you now ratify and uh, confirm if, yes. uh, if, if possible. Those that pass the test. Or not? Yes. OK. Um, but you know, just to let you know that Nigerians are really hoping and uh, expecting that you and your colleagues will live up to the expectation and to the bidding. And also, we act in the interest of the Nigerian people in whatever you are doing, yes. including the monies that you appropriate for yourselves in the National Assembly. You also need to consider that things are not going very well for Nigerians. And uh, the 70 billion and any other money that you are appropriating, the car loans, maybe you can defy it uh, for the good of Nigerians. But that's just an aside. But let me ask you. They, they, you went into an executive session over the, the, the coup matter uh, in Niger. Um, what was that heated conversation that some of us were is dropping on uh, behind uh, the doors? Well, um, the Niger incident, of course, is a very worrisome one. Uh, as an African, uh, you remember that um, uh, about three or four countries in West Africa yeah, if it's under the leadership of the military junta's, and that is not very good, uh, you know, as a continent. And uh, President uh, uh, Bola Chinubu, being the you know the chairman of ECOWAS, of course, uh, is upon him to make sure that the right thing is done. And uh, what is the right thing in this contest? Of course, to do all that is within his powers, you know, as the chairman of ECOWAS, you know, to restore uh, democratic rules in Niger. And uh, in line with the constitutional provision, uh, he wrote to the Senate, you know, seeking our nod uh, to some of the diplomatic measures, you know, all geared towards restoring normalcy and democracy in Niger. Uh, it was well canvassed, and uh, of course, I must tell you, uh, all the measures being proposed by Mr. President are in line with the constitutional provision, uh, you know, uh, it has not aired in any form, and uh, there was no controversy. A per se. Did he uh, ask for military uh, uh, boots on the ground in Niger? Uh, uh, of course. Uh, military intervention, of course, would be the last resort. Did he, it was, was it part of his request? It was not part of the request. Uh, remember, before we can do that, uh, the constitution mandates the boat house, you know, to sit, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, jointly and give such approval. So that tells you that they cannot ask Senate uh, for, for, for approval for military intervention in the first place. Uh, so all he asks is for, you know, other diplomatic measures, you know, like economic sanctions, you know. Uh, as you can be seen, the letter is a public document. You can see there. So uh, when it becomes necessary, you know, for military intervention, which I know is the final, the last resort, of course, definitely we'll consider it and, of course, advise appropriately. Uh, remember, um, this is a very sensitive matter uh, that we should not uh, play politics with because uh, uh, today is Niger. Who knows what happens tomorrow? And uh, if one country out of uh, you know the, 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 the country that make up the West Africa uh, is not happy, of course it affects us as a Nigeria, as a country. So it's something that we have to keep politics aside and do the need for. Mm. So if if military operation becomes necessary, definitely the Senate will look at it and will advise appropriately. Uh, let me go to uh, Professor Dukwa in our uh, Meduguri studio, uh, Prof. Uh, you have a lot of understanding yeah. about international relations of this magnitude. And uh, uh, if, if you can just let our, our viewers know, Niger, for those who do not even have an idea of what this country is all about, is one of the largest in, in terms of landmass, but <coughs> it's less than the population of Lagos and Oyo State put together. It's about uh, 25 million or so. It's landlocked. Is bordered by Libya, bordered by Benin Republic, bordered by um, uh, um, Algeria, Man. Nigeria, Chad, and um, uh, it has a, a huge land mass, of Man. course. And language is similar to Nigeria, uh, such as Kanuri, Fufude, Hausa languages are being spoken 
in that country. And also, uh, to, to also be mentioned here, that that country is one of the poorest countries in the world. Now, looking at what happened in Libya, give us an understanding. Okay, you can see the military size of the country uh, is GDP. Uh, it's, it's relatively, in terms of population, small. Economy-wise, they, 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 they have a, a very um, a poor economy set. But, Prof, give us an understanding uh, yes. of what you make yes. of President Tunubu's stance, the federal government's stance and position uh, in what is happening in the Nigeria Republic. Great question, Shaw. Look, before even the coming of the white man, the colonialist, Niger was just like an extension of northern Nigeria. And we had the, the oldest uh, empire in the entire uh, sub-region, which was Kanem Borno, which ruled for over 1,200 years before the emergence of other, uh, other uh, kingdoms and so on, and uh, shares borders with, with Nigeria for over 1,100 uh, kilometers with many roads leading to the intermarriages. In fact, they are, uh, Niger uh, is, uh, and uh, those from northern Nigeria are blood brothers, speaking the same language, they have the same culture. Until 1884 at the Berlin Conference when the, the white men decided to sit down, I, I earlier referred to, shared uh, like a cake without the consent or presence of any uh, African delegation. And you, you know why is it poor? That uh, uh, why is it that uh, people were quick to to go behind to 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 accept the the junta uh, military? Though the it is not uh, a fashion for us to have military regime. But in the case of Niger, um, indeed, all the ex-French colonies have never attained independence, economically speaking. When your independence is not economically viable, it means the political one is not, virtually nothing. Uh, Niger is number, number six in, uh, in the world in terms of uranium. Uh, it also has gas, and that in every three bulbs lit in, in France, one is from Niger, uh, Niger uh, uranium, and therefore, they had to agree, sign a document prior to the independence of Niger on the 3rd of August, which was yesterday, 63rd of them, to sign that no any country is qualified to even train any, uh, any personnel, military or police personnel from Niger, except France. And uh, France was also given the green light to intervene militarily at any time, and those resources are controlled by France. France keeps 85% of the resources, all of them, 85% and kept them in French tre treasury. They are ru being ruled under the Minister of Finance. The way I'm speaking English now, I can also speak French. I, I was a student there, and I was also a visiting professor. I was teaching the, the policies of colonial countries like France, Britain, America, and so on, uh, outside France. The typical of like American students or British and so on, they don't know geography, they don't know their history. They don't know. They don't know where Nigeria is, where Africa is. And that uh, those uh, who were a bit surprised by the decision of Mr. President not to have allowed uh, the, uh, any, the secretary to have done it in the, uh, on behalf of the, the colonial, uh, on behalf of the um, members of ECOWAS themselves, numbering 14, uh, the coup is a military coup. Fine. What about the constitutional coup? that happened, they looked the other way simply because those who broke the laws in order to remain in power in Guinea, yes, in Guinea in the past it happened, they didn't say anything. In Cote d'Ivoire, so, so when prof, Bagbo, Laurent yeah, Bagbo yeah. wanted a recount of the votes, it was French troops, let me land, it okay. was French troops that intervened and dislodged Laurent Bagbo. And again, the same place, and uh, so many, so many things. Constitutionally, they they did it in Nigeria. We were lucky; we were able to defeat it. 
And therefore, what was it that uh, those who changed the laws to remain in power were not punished? Simply because, like I said, France has never let their own uh, the ex-colonies go because those people who are uh, colonized by France are still paying for the few infrastructures put in place by France, unfortunately. So, Prof, my question will be, the manner of uh, the approach of President Tinubu and ECOWAS, uh, it doesn't look like that, that it's gone down well with some uh, northern interests. Is that right? In Nigeria? Uh, it's something like that, because I earlier referred to advisors, because if you were to take advisors or ministers, please... Uh, uh, President Dunubu will go for, uh, should go for advisors who know history of Nigeria, who know some international relations who will advise appropriately. Uh, the concept of putting a team, the Lagos team in the past, is no longer possible at the national level. And therefore, let it, let it be people who know history and that uh, France as a country has never supported Nigeria. Let us put it straight. Uh, during the Biafra war, uh, supported uh, Biafra to pull down Nigeria. And uh, the, uh, France so much believes that a peaceful Nigeria will give it its uh, uh, green light to lead other African countries into economic mm -hmm. prosperity, into having fewer or a single currency, into having trade within the continent. And those uh, leadership roles, the, the, uh, Nigeria has them in terms of uh, resources, both human and materials, and therefore mm -hmm. uh, it has always yeah. been. We had uh, instances of seeing foreign, foreign um, uh, plane dropping certain things, and each time you go around, if there is a conflict, and so on, check there are resources in there. People oh. uh, are alleged to have seen a plane in, in Zampara, in the gold uh, mine area, and that independence, since the independence of DR Congo, the fight has been going on, it has never ended. Yeah. And why the Nigeria is the only country that has not invited a UN or European allies? They think what President Tinubu did is, is good, is good for those who, uh, who wanted to, uh, to control the lecture. And to them, uh, the, the conspiracy was that, as I read, as far back as 1984, having an opportunity is not only the lecture region that was targeted. It, uh, Lagos was also part of the, the plan, part of the plan because to cripple the economy. And Lagos, it is our New York. Mm. And so, therefore, yeah. uh, look at the border throughout over 1,100 uh, uh, kilometers of people, the same people uh, speaking officially French uh, from the other side, and Nigeria is the only uh, country with English linguistically separating. Uh, brothers and sisters. So, so Prof, and therefore, yeah. uh, Elias said prior to 1884, mm -hmm. there was history. And that history of Khan and Bordeaux was there. No other empire existed. Uh, those uh, Zazza, Kano, Sokoto came over 1,200 years after, after Borno. And so, that, uh, the same culture and so on. Because let a, a president has done this thing without the consent of the National Assembly. And the National Assembly now belatedly asked they said no, no to it, because taking uh, a country into, into war front is not a job of one person in this entire thing. The same thing uh, I earlier said about uh, President Obasanjo that Bekasi signed a document on behalf of Nigeria without, first of all, consulting the National Assembly back in, in Paris. That was any, uh, any uh, verdict uh, yeah. passed by the International Court of Justice which are from time to time more of politi political, right. political, why? Because the Western world uh, picks the bill and that the Western world do no wrong. Only developing countries the, from Africa, from okay, the prof, Middle East, yeah. from former Yugoslavia and so on. Mm. Again, uh, going to war means France is the member of NATO. By law, Article 5, attack on one, one member of NATO is an attack on all of them. Those laws were signed uh, uh, prior to the collapse of the Soviet Union. 
and that no country from former Soviet Union should join NATO. All right. From, oh, from yeah. 12, today there are over, uh, over 30 moving towards the borders. That is a subject for another day. That, that, we should, that's we should a very, even discuss it. Yeah. What happened to Libya after the destruction of Libya? Libya did not attack any NATO country uh, before the invasion of Libya. The same thing for yeah. Iraq. Prof, for, yeah. for Bosnia, the same thing applies in Af Afghanistan, yeah. where the law, certain countries are, are above the law, but look at uh, the scenario, the destruction of labor affected all of us in Mali. And once you are a president of Nigeria, mind you just note it, never think like somebody who has never known other parts of the, uh, the continent. Because all right. Even the people of Mali, far away Mali and Sudan, uh, uh, loyal to the leadership of, of Nigeria as a big brother. Right. No, uh, just not Prof, about yeah. just what, Nigeria, what, what, Chad I mean, or, you, you, you or, or Northern very... And therefore, yeah. uh, whatever happened during the uh, subsidy, withdrawal of subsidy, affected all these countries. And I earlier said, I said subsidy has always been there for energy over 80% yeah. of of those things were subsidized well, Prof, in European we, we really need to go, but I, I really must thank you for those interventions uh, and the rich understanding and perspectives that you have uh, given us tonight on the situation in Nigeria, Prof. But we really need to go now. Uh, Senator, I just have 20 seconds to go. Five uh, ministerial nominees from your state, I mean, from your region. How are your people reacting to this? Well, um, uh, it's a very unfortunate development. Mm -hmm. Because uh, outside the statutory one per state, of course, as a Southeast, we deserve uh, one additional ministerial nominee. And uh, of course, people are talking in the social media. Uh, the agitation is uh, uh, not out of it, uh, it's quite in place. And um, right. uh, it goes without saying that I believe that the president uh, will look at that. But however, let me use this um, real opportunity to advise. Uh, my people, the people of Southeast, uh, it is high time uh, we play this politics, uh, you know, with high level of uh, cleverness. I'm a, I'm uh, because yeah. uh, because we must align properly. We need, we need to go now. Yes. We're out of time. We must, we must align yeah. properly, you know, with the government at the center. Because I must tell you, uh, in our last election, uh, I cannot beat my chest and say. Uh, Southeast right. did well for APC. Senator, so, thank but you I so believe much. that uh, yeah. more opportunity will come for thank us to play that normally. However, Senator, we're expecting, we are totally out of time. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, we're expecting the additional one and the, the nominees. Senator, don't yeah, let me rule you out of order. Thank, thank you. you so much. I <laughs> appreciate it. Prof, thank you so much indeed. Well, that's our time tonight on the program. Thank you everyone for watching. I'm sure Kimale, I'll see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. Bye bye. <laughs>
let's come together to empower parents and create an enabling environment. Breastfeeding saves lives and money. This message is sponsored by the Child Health Advocacy Initiative in collaboration with the First Lady of Lagos State and CEO Medic Aid CF Programs.